Chapter 3, Trade, Cooperation, and War Native Americans and colonists had complex relationships that included periods of peace and periods of tension. The leader of the Jamestown settlement, Captain John Smith, befriended Chief Powhatan, leader of the Powhatan people who were living in the area. The two groups began trading. Early settlers were largely dependent on the Native Americans for food. They traded for corn, turkey, pumpkins, and fruit. Colonists also traded metal tools for furs and leather. Native Americans introduced colonists to tobacco and other crops. The colonists promised to trade guns and cannons to the Native Americans, but Smith did not want to arm the Native Americans with those weapons. When the Powhatan realized they would not be getting the weapons, they withdrew their corn, which angered the colonists. Bloody fights broke out often between the groups. I'm going to pause for a moment and take a look at this uh, box that says Perspectives Matoaka. In about 1607, John Smith met Matoaka, better known as Pocahontas. The daughter of Chief Powhatan, Matoaka often interacted with John Smith and the Jamestown colonists. She brought them much needed gifts of food. When Matoaka was 17, the colonists took her prisoner. The colonists claimed that Powhatan had stolen weapons and attacked settlers. The colonists wanted English prisoners released and the weapons returned. Ne negotiations failed and Matoaka was never returned to her people. Eventually, Matoaka married colonist John Rolfe. She and Rolfe traveled to Europe to promote the English colony. Matawaka grew ill and died soon after. So that's actually the true story of Pocahontas. Let's continue reading. Many Native Americans were forced to leave their land because of colonists' use of their superior firepower. Other relationships between Native Americans and colonists were more friendly. In March 1621, an Algonquin named Samoset walked into Plymouth Colony and began talking to the colonists in English. Samoset brought Squanto, a Patwick. I'm not sure how to read this word. I'm going to see if I can. It doesn't pronounce it for you. I'm going to do my best. A Patwick man who had been living with the with the Wampanoag people to teach the pilgrims how to plant corn, rye, and oats successfully. Squanto explained that placing fish in the ground with seeds helped to fertilize the soil. In return for his help, the colonists offered him seeds they brought with them from England. New England colonists and Native Americans feasted on fruits, including apples, pears, cherries, rabbit, venison, and squirrels were abundant because they were easily caught. With the Atlantic Ocean nearby, fish and eel were plentiful. All of these foods could be dried and stored for the harsh winter months. The, the, they feasted together in the fall of 1621 to celebrate a bountiful harvest and successful hunt. The pilgrims and Native Americans ate outside. The men raced and fired guns. They communicated with each other as much as they could in their different languages. I'm going to stop and take a look at this photo. There's a caption that says, The Pilgrim of Plymouth Colony started a harvest feast in 1621. This was later called Thanksgiving. It was a peaceful time between the two groups, but the peace did not last. The successful settlements in Virginia and New England encouraged other Europeans to cross the Atlantic some colonists already living in North America moved to other parts of the continent to create their own new settlements. Wherever they went, they brought conflict over land, ownership, and disease that wiped out Native populations. That's the end of this chapter. If you'd like to read straight to the source, you can pause this video to read it. Um, and I'm also going to read this box here because uh, it's a really interesting story about the lost colony of Roanoke, which is kind of like a mystery. And many of you might be interested in reading more about this by going on Epic or Raz Kids and looking it up. Earlier in this book, oh, so I guess you can go back to this book to read about this. The mystery of what happened to the settlers of Roanoke was discussed. What evidence was found? Go to the article about Ro Roanoke at the website below. Historians are learning what happened to the settlers using science. What new evidence do they have?
How does it help solve the mystery? So that's going to be the end of this book. If you would like to read more, feel free to look this up on Epic. Here is the title. It's called Life in Colonial America by Julia Garstecki.